welcome to my talk on using Apache Beam to process level 3 order book data. My name is Daniel Trias. I head up engineering at Cambrian Asset Management. Cambrian runs a systematic hedge fund that focuses on digital assets. Uh, we build and use software algorithms to trade between US dollars and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. Our algorithms rely extensively on market data, so we use Apache Beam as a core part of our data processing pipeline. Uh, this is a lightning talk, so I'm going to go through a lot of things fairly quickly, uh, but I'm hoping that this gets you interested in some of the ways that Beam can be used in finance. So I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about uh, what a central limit order book is. I'm going to talk about how we can programmatically connect to and ingest data from an exchange. And then I'm going to talk about how we can process that data using Apache Beam. So to start with, what's, a, what's an exchange, or more specifically, what's a crypto exchange? Uh, a crypto exchange is a trusted counterparty that can be used to exchange cryptocurrencies to US dollars and back. Uh, you can actually exchange between cryptocurrency pairs, but we primarily trade in US dollars, so that's what I'm going to focus on. Crypto exchanges, uh, most of them, use something called a price time priority uh, order book to match buyers with sellers. A, uh, if you have a background in computer science, you can think of a price time priority order book uh, as, as an ordered map or dictionary where each uh, price is a key, price level is a key, and at that level there's a first in, first out queue that contains the orders. So uh, to make that a little bit clearer, I'm going to just give you a quick example here. So let's imagine that um, there's a cryptocurrency called Beam. I did a quick Google search. There actually is a cryptocurrency called Beam, but I don't think it's related to related to this particular project. So uh, in, in our imaginary cryptocurrency Beam, uh, let's say that the, the average price is about $100 per coin. I happen to have five of those imaginary coins, and uh, but I believe that, that they're worth more like $102 a piece. So I'm willing to sell my five Beam coins for $102, so I would submit that order to an exchange. Uh, but since there isn't a buyer at that price, the exchange is going to place place my order on the order book uh, at the price level of $102. Now, let's say there's somebody else who would like to buy some Beam coins, but they think that uh, they only want to buy it if at the price of $97 per coin. They think that's the, the more correct price, uh, and they have enough money to buy 22 of them. So they would place an order to buy uh, 22 Beam coins at $97. Uh, and, and so since there isn't a, a buyer for that, um, that would also get placed on the order book. Now you can imagine as additional buyers and sellers come in, these orders uh, fill up at the different levels until we have uh, offers uh, at every single level uh, or every imaginable price. The uh, lowest asking price uh, is known as the best ask. The highest bid is known as the best bid. And the difference between the best ask and the best bid is called the spread. Um, in a real exchange, th this process of uh, adding and removing orders to the order book is happening at a rate of thousands of times per second. So people are constantly jockeying for position. They want to be at best ask or best bid. So people are submitting orders, canceling them, uh, removing them. Orders are getting matched and filled. So this uh, illustration that I have here, this, this animation is showing um, a depiction of an order book from Coinbase Pro. On the left, we have uh, the order book ladder, like I mentioned, where you have the, the house at the top and the bids at the bottom. Uh, on the right, you have the trade history, which shows the, the recent trades that have happened or recent matches in the order book. At the top, you have the price history. And in the center, you have a graphical depiction of the uh, level two order book. So a level two order book um, just means that at each price level, all the order sizes are aggregated. So instead of showing each individual order, uh, it shows the combined size of all the orders, and that's in order to uh, uh, to be able to display more information visually uh, and to, to make the, the data more compact. So um, that was the background information. Uh, let, me, let me talk a little bit about why this is important to us. When our automated systems want to buy or sell on an exchange, uh, we want to do that in an optimal way. For example, uh, we likely would want to break up large orders into a lot of smaller orders over time, um, or we may want to optimize for a way of providing liquidity to the exchange instead of taking it. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of strategies that we, we use, uh, but in order to build and test these strategies, we need lots of real market data. Uh, and that's where Apache Beam comes in for us. 
Uh, on Coinbase, for instance, we can request a level three order book snapshot. Uh, it gives us a JSON list of all the orders at every price level on the bid and the ask size. It looks a little bit like what you see here. Um, but this ends up being a large file. So it's about uh, three megabytes in size. So even if you have a fast internet connection, you can imagine from the time that we request the snapshot of the order book to the time we receive it, um, if you have orders happening every millisecond, our order book data is already out of date by the time that we, we download it. So what's the solution to that? Well, you can also subscribe to a WebSocket feed that provides messages that are just the changes in the order book snapshot. So you can imagine something like um, uh, messages that we see here, where you have a message for an order when it's open, when it's done, when it's matched and received. I'm not going to go into the specifics of all these messages and how they all work, but the, the important thing to keep in mind is that if you imagine uh, you receive a snapshot and then you record all the messages that happen through time, uh, if you replay those messages on the snapshot, you can recreate the full order book at some point in the future. So um, the amount of data that comes in is quite large, um, too large to reasonably store in a database. We can't possibly store all these messages in a database and we can't possibly store um, uh, all the order book snapshots at every point in time. But uh, we can use Apache Beam to process the data to put it in a format where we can use it in the future. So we can imagine that we want to um, sometimes grab historical data but maybe we just want an hour's worth of data at a particular time or just a day's worth of data. So we have a, a Beam pipeline where we connect via WebSocket to Coinbase. We read the messages coming through the WebSocket. We write them to PubSub. Our pipeline is uh, deployed on Google Cloud. Uh, the key would be the asset name or the instrument name, and the payload would be the message JSON. And then uh, Beam reads from PubSub. It applies a windowing function to those, uh, groups the files by the, or groups by the asset name, which is the instrument name, and then writes the files windowed to disk where you have one file per hour per asset written to disk. We also have a more sophisticated pipeline um, that applies custom transforms to the snapshots based on incoming messages. So it, it essentially is what it's doing. It's processing the full order book snapshot um, based on the message that comes in, but it only outputs the JSON of the top 10 level, uh, the top 10 price level changes. So instead of outputting the entire order book, we're processing the entire order book, but then only outputting a truncated version of it. And that allows us to store uh, the truncated windowed order book snapshots in a reasonable way on cloud storage. So like I said, this pipeline is deployed to uh, Dataflow. Uh, we're currently processing about 100 unique keys in parallel. Um, and overall, we're handling uh, between 5 and 10 billion messages per week. So what are we working on now? Um, we have multiple Apache Beam pipelines for uh, everything from trade data, order book data, derivatives data. One of the great things about Beam is that it allows us to scale up very easily. So we're constantly adding new pipelines and scaling them. Uh, and we're also working on a lot of custom p-transforms where we can take, um, you know, apply uh, transforms to take the data that we're ingesting and place it in a format where the data science teams can work it with it directly. Unfortunately, we're out of time here for my lightning talk, but I hope this uh, got you a little bit interested in some of the ways that we're using Beam for Finance. If you have any other questions, I think you can catch me on the Slack or email me, Daniel at Cambrian Asset, or on Twitter at Therese. Thanks so much.